The QPR podcast is brought to you in association with PartyPoker.com. Sign up now using the bonus code QPRPOD and PartyPoker will match your initial deposit. QPR! Hello and welcome to a QPR podcast with uh, six points in the bag. Thank you very much. And away win. It's been a damn good week. Anyway, I'm Paul Finney. Um, I'm, jo- well, I'm not joined because we're all... There's, there's no there's no hierarchy this week when I'm in charge. I don't say Paul Finney's joined by people. We're all friends. So I'm joined by um, Chris Charles, who I haven't seen for ages. Actually, I've seen you at Charlton. Carry on. Hello. Yes. How are you keeping? All right. You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah. We've got Roger Milford. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, by the way, Martin. We've got Martin Millard, who's ex-QPR youth, plays in the band. What's the band called again? Orange Goblin. Excellent. And um, out of interest, just to clear this up, Therapy or Simple Minds, who would your poison be? Do I have to choose? Uh, <laughs> okay. Someone who listen to that will know what that joke is. I know. Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So, and, God, it's good to see you, Chris. It's good to Chris see you, Chris Mendes. Penny. How you doing? I'm all right. Notice I didn't give anyone a job title here. Like, you know, Dave does the old ATV sport, BT sport, and then like, oh yeah, and Finney drives a van. You know, we're not doing that. This is, this is nice and relaxed. And Gabriel's here as well in the most peculiar fest I've ever seen in my life. And you should have some tattoos in your arms you're going to wear a vest like that. Talking of which, I like your QPR tattoo, by the way, Martin. It's absolutely class. And it's, got the, and it's got the last badge on it. No. It's, it's not a tattoo. Which could be badge. the new badge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Enough of my boring stupidity. Who wants to start and talk about that wonderful win Saturday? Because, or do you want to talk about cover the Wolves game? Let's cover Wolves first and um, where we were and um, how we how we, do we see that comeback coming? And then we'll go on to Saturday. Okay. Well, um, did I see the comeback coming? Mm, at two 0 down after how many minutes was it? It was less than ten, wasn't mm, it? Um, it? Wasn't good. I, 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 I no, I didn't. Uh, in all honesty, I was I was following it. Uh, on Twitter, on one of the forums, um, and I still wasn't too disheartened. I wasn't too, I wasn't disheartened at Charlton particularly. I do think it's you know it's a team that's um, work in progress. We've got some people who might be leaving, but they, they, if they are leaving, they're doing pretty well, um, uh, doing a pretty good job. Um, not well. What I'm trying to say is they're not doing a Raheem Sterling. Um, but no, I didn't see it coming. But I was pleasantly surprised when the first goal went in, and uh, you know the glimmer of hope. And then, yeah, ex- extraordinary. But what I did notice on the message boards, particularly, that people were so ready to stick the knife in mm-hmm. as soon as they're almost waiting. And the first goal went in, Ramsey out, blah blah blah. Um, which I, I, I just think it's a bit infantile, and I think it should be given a bit more time than that. But yeah, and and, and it's just gone from strength to strength since then. So yeah, very happy bunny. In musical terms, I think in the last few weeks we've gone from singing Moon River to shiny happy people. I think. <laughs> hey, how long have you been thinking about that one? <laughs> 14 years and three yeah. days. <laughs> but there is the worry, though. We are, you know, you kind of, the way we're going at the moment, our attacking quality, the likes of Matty Phillips and Charlie Austin are getting us out of trouble because we're conceding like two goals a game. You know, like even Clint mm-hmm. Hill was on the football, football League show uh, on Saturday night. And he's like, you know, it's not ideal, you know, league, conceding that many goals a game. But our, uh, our, our quality is seeing us through at the moment. And if they leave, who, who's going to score apart from Clint Hill? But then, I mean, you, you, the, the counter argument to that is, is is the fact that we're scoring so many goals, the fact that we're we're so open and we're we're leaving ourselves exposed at the back. Is that more to do with the style of play than the personnel? Do you think? Or we seem to be like two, well, us against whoever we play at the moment is like two overweight old boxers <laughs> fighting out to the finish. You know, yeah. And whoever's standing at <laughs> ninety minutes is kind of the winner. It's funny. We've scored more goals than any other team in the league, and only one team's conceded more. So. Do you know, the funny thing is, yeah, it, it, it's, it's fun though, isn't it? But, but, but it's, <laughs> football is, and I'm not going to say cliches because it's not funny the old game. Now you had to do that. Oh, sorry, but yeah. what I was going to say, it's funny how your games turn in just a second because at Wolves, if yeah. Green hadn't done that save, it would be three nil, game over. Yeah. And on Saturday, they miss an absolute sitter yeah, of a it's chance. It's fine lines, isn't it? I mean, Massively, we, yeah. massively. We, we could easily have have lost that game at Wolves, and we could have easily have drawn or lost Saturday if. If we was playing against a maybe a sharper attack, they did. They weren't all that, were they? No, I mean, I've actually, I was actually. I know we've skipped from Wolves to Rotherham, but I was actually just shocked at how bad they were, actually, and then shocked that we let them back in the game. They oh, weren't yeah. exactly stiff opposition, were they? Well, they, they they wanted to put it over our back four, so we'd put it out for a throw in, 
and then that was all their game plan. They had a long throw, and that was kind of all they had. But um, but the, the, to be honest with you, though, you'd take it, wouldn't you? You'd take the three points at Wolves, you take the three points Saturday, because it's more important to get the wins, yeah. br- brings confidence, losing kills and, you. And I think as well, I mean, it, it tells its own story that we've had four games. I think it was uh, even after three games, no team in the league had a hundred percent record. There are team teams in this the championship beat open. everybody. I mean, yeah. that's. I, I don't think you can. You know, it's not just us. Who, who, I, mean, I bet there's fans of other clubs on other podcasts who were oh, saying no, the same yeah. things. You know, Absolutely. and who'd have had Ipswich being top at the, the, at the start of the season? But do you know what I, I will say? And because um, I'm in the chair, and I can say it once. I'm in control until I get sacked for being rubbish. <laughs> Is that the difference between Charlie Austin and some of the Premiership players who want to move? You know, these the, 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 some of these players are trying to play the field a wee bit, like a wee man at Man United. He's trying to sort of like he wants to get but whereas Charlie to be fair to him and no one can take us against him he's head down he's but scoring goals I mean. he's not sulking no that's, that's that's the point I was trying to make and, and I, haven't, I haven't this is my first appearance on the podcast this season for various reasons but because you're boring no yeah. welcome back but, I mean at Charlton you know after you know I saw you after the game blah 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 but what I couldn't believe is that that, that, that was a, there was a very small section of fans who were actually booing Charlie Austin it, I got the rival one he, he, he threatened to beat me up outside the ground Really? Um, because he, he went for a, The ball came in And I said it'd have to be a giraffe To get that And he wants fisticuffs outside I'm Yeah like, there was a bloke next mad. to me And uh, you know it, It's odd, odd, odd I'll bet a pet if he's listening So he can say sorry Odd sort of groups of people But I mean uh, To me it was clear in that And I know I'm going back a few games that it, that What was wrong with Charlie in that game Was that he was unfit he, You know He, he was knackered But he's a notorious slow starter though Chris as well Well uh, no uh, Notorious slow starter He scored four ga- goals in four games this season yeah, um, previously exactly, yeah, but I mean, it has been a slow start at every season he's played and every, but he does get goals and he knows where he is but also but if that's, he had, no, if he had no support in that game at all really yeah no but, service and since then I mean if that's a player he can't be asked he's scoring four goals in four games and I'd hate to see him when he can actually be bothered you know cause before, before we go, go to Chris Ramsey which I'm quite happy we've got because this, this is brilliant because a lot of fans that don't hear a lot from Chris and you know it's good that you can do it on the QPR podcast. manager right not the comedian no that's my job uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, Can you imagine I'd be pelted to the death at stage No but I think you'd be a good comedian actually <laughs> <laughs> You've seen my dress sense You may be um, after Do I do in that Yeah whatever Now the thing is This is this is a quick question Before we go to Chris Is it worth keeping Ramsey oh, Ramsey Keeping Austin And Phillips And just maybe let them go cheaper in January Just to get as many points as we can Between now and January Is this an option do you think well, it might have to be because it's an option. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Oh, oh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't want to make that decision no. because because it's it's a lot of money. Say 15 because I think someone will pay the 15 million. I'm, so it's a Premiership at the end of the season. I, it's, if it's, it's January, gonna be, it's going to be late, and we have to have a contingency contingency plan to put straight in to place as soon as Austin goes, and hopefully it's not like deadline hour. But I I think that after. Saturday, I expect him to be having a medical somewhere on the Sunday. I do because it's. I think the deadline's Tuesday, isn't it? It's is Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. PM. Five. Five. Is it six? So if you see Charlie Austin going in one direction and David Sullivan going in the other direction, you know he's having a medical somewhere. Yeah. Did you mean that? <laughs> that was ridiculous, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. just a yeah. moron. But but um, I don't know. That, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I expect him to go, and I think it's a lot of money that we. At the moment, we probably can't. I mean, there's, there's people saying, "Oh, we don't need the money up." We do need the money because we're 200 million yeah. in debt. If so you wait till January, it, we won't get more than five million for him because he'll only have six months left mm. in his contract. Yeah, depends. It won't be very depends. Much. If the other, other side of the coin, the January is somebody's four points adrift at the bottom. They've, they need goals. People, it's, it's we can afford to do it with Phillips it, so. because Phillips is on longer. He's got lots, much more left on his contract. Yeah. So Phillips, I could see stay until January. What about Leroy Fur? Well, no one's really talked about him and. and, and has anyone Andrew? seen? Yeah, San, everyone's seen. He's oh, in San. Brazil. Is he still? It's not much use. Is I it? can't see us. I can't. Or maybe Chris will know where he is. Sandro Someone posted a message in Portuguese recently where he said, oh, "I've still got a few years left on my contract at um, QPR, but hopefully I'll be back in Brazil soon, playing for Internacional." So oh, sure. so that's a that's a pretty coded message for come get me if I've ever heard one yeah yeah. I mean it's very coded I don't think so at all I was being slightly flippant with that but it is if you don't speak Portuguese but well, the thing is you talk about money he goes for nothing that's 20, 20 million down the pound do you know are what I mean are you talking about Charlie yeah. no oh, sorry Sandra. Uh, oh Sandro, Sandro yeah, that yeah, whole yeah, investment yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's why you say that the, the, t- the money we're in debt with he won't go I'd, for nothing though, yeah. but going back to Charlie and, and I mean if, if you're at a situation you know ridiculous I know but uh, in January where 
his goals have put us given us a, a, a 12 point cushion over third place then yes it's going to be it'll be worth doing because the money you get from getting promoted is going to dwarf whatever he you know and it may be in that situation that he thinks well actually I might as well you know so then there's, the a, the, the, there's another option is QPR give him a contract now but they, they, have, they, they tried that, didn't they? Or, I mean... What they should do is, right, they should send the wee kid in to get an autograph, have the contract on the new <laughs> <laughs> No witnesses, no crime. That is a good idea, yeah. You know, and just... Because I, I, I don't think he's a bad... And I think he's been... And whatever happens when he comes back to Rangers, he will be massively applauded, because I think it's brilliant. See, well, he's so, go so he should be, yeah. He's not sulking, he hasn't hid, he's been out there, and fair play to him. Right, we're going to phone Chris Ramsey. Get your questions ready. This could be an interesting interview. Chris, thank you so much for coming on the QPR podcast and even better after a wonderful home win. Really appreciate that. And um, how do you feel about that? Is it, is it nice to get that under the belt? Yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest, we've, we've been playing well. I think we've played well in every game, but the problem is, is we've still got the hangover of, uh, of letting in goals. You know, we've let in two goals a game. It's not good. Um, I know we, we've got the potential to score, but... Um, that was the only negative side of it, really, um, because really, we, at three 0 we probably should have just shut the game out at, at that at that stage, you know. Chris, yeah, hi, Chris. Uh, it's another Chris here. There's three of us. This could get a bit confusing <laughs> <laughs> tonight. Um, how are all the new players uh, settling in? How's the atmosphere in the in the dressing room? Uh, the new players are okay. They're doing okay. I mean, I've just. Believe it or not, I'm just coming back from a game now, looking at some more players. So there will be more players coming in, coming into uh, into the club, and it is, all, you know, always a, a tricky situation trying to gel them. But uh, you know, they've they've all worked very hard, and they're all excited to uh, come to a club with such a great tradition. Yeah, I mean, you, you say you're looking at new players. I mean, you, you mentioned the defence right at the top of the, the interview there. I mean, is that one area you're maybe looking at? Uh, yeah, I think I think we have to look at but, oh, the three three main areas of the pitch. We definitely need to uh, get a little bit more firepower, and uh, and I think you know the way we want to play. You know, someone like Ali Forland is going to be very important for us. But you know, we know he's only just come back from from you know three horrible injuries, um, and he's still a bit ring rusty. So we have to get someone else in his vein who can play that position as well. You know. Uh, hi, uh, hi, Chris. It's Martin. Well, I could change the name to Chris if it makes things easier. <laughs> but, uh, uh, how are you personally finding the transition from kind of a coach, uh, backroom I, staff? I, I, and, am I find, finding it? Yeah, like being uh, the main man all of a sudden. Uh, how are you finding it? Um, you know, because you, you know, you, you know, you, you kind of have to maybe take a step back from the, the banter that would go on if you're just a normal coach. Uh, how are you finding it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm checking it in my stride. Really, I mean. It's a it's a great opportunity to uh, you know to manage a, a, you know a, a really good club and uh, the owners are well behind me and I've got Les at my side as well um, you know helping me as much as he can so I'm, I'm very pleased with the, the, the way the club is and I'm very pleased uh, to have this opportunity. How's uh, how's Steve Gallen doing? Because uh, obviously I well not that you wouldn't know but I played with him in the youth team two centre halves together so how, he, he kind of gave the impression even then as a kind of 6, 17, year, 18 year old that he was always going to go on to be a coach maybe rather than a player so how's he doing? Steve, Steve's good I've, I've, I've known Steve longer longer than I've known anybody else at the club I know uh, I used to do camps in America with him years and years ago so um, and uh, when I was at Tottenham he used to come and watch us watch us coach over there so I've known him a little while. Hey, Chris. Chris Mendes here. Um, Hi, Chris. Hey, Chris. Uh, there's, there's been a lot written, as you know, about Charlie Austin, and I'm sure you're sick of answering questions about him, but is there an update on it? And uh, do you have any uh, kind of players lined up just in case he leaves to replace him? Uh, well, first of all, the update is that we haven't had anything concrete enough to draw him away from the club. Yeah. Um, so, so that's that on that. And uh, secondly, we're always looking um, just in case something happens at the last minute. But the, the problem we've got is that any money that comes in, uh, we're going to have to either put it into the bottomless pit that we've got yeah. or um, spend some of it on a replacement, which okay. will be very difficult if anything happens at the last minute. So we're, we're um, crossing our fingers that nothing really happens. <laughs> 
Okay, I know there's been a lot of talk this weekend from managers. I think Tony Pulis was one of them that he said he just he just doesn't like the transfer window. He wants it to be over uh, before the season starts. Is that something that you agree with? Would you prefer it if that was the case? Uh, yeah, I would champion that because I don't understand how you can have a transfer window going on into the season uh, when people should have really done their business by now. Um, you know, for me, I, I would say that the transfer window should probably close the first week in July because historically clubs come back either you know any time between the 1st and the 10th of July clubs come back around about that time depending whether it's a World Cup or a, or a European um, championship year so I, w- I, would, I would imagine that uh, most managers will, w- would want to see the window shut um, at that stage um, Chris is Paul again here now I- after the Wolves match, a wee birdie tells me there was a lot of um, dancing and, and joviality in the dress room and, and music playing. So it kind of got me thinking, are you kind of more, if you join in with the dancing, are you more like a dad dancer? Or are you more like a John Travolta? Or are you basically doing the robotic Peter Crouch thing going on there? Can you shed any light in the, these rumours? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a tango dancer. Oh, hey. uh, really? <laughs> All right, OK. The only, the only one I didn't cover, thanks for that, Chris. That was brilliant. Now, the other thing is, how, how would you describe your relationship with Les and what are the actual rules that each of you are, are doing? Uh, my relationship with him, what, professionally? Well, yeah, within, 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 say, from youth team to everything, who, who covers what and, 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 and so forth? No, Les, Les is basically in charge. He's in charge okay. of the whole thing. So Les employs me. Uh, you know, obviously through the owners, Les, Les would give guidance on who to employ into this, into this role. So um, I, I, I answer to Les, really. Um, and uh, basically what happens was, because I was in charge of the youth development of the club before I took the job, um, a lot of the decisions that go in uh, in that, they probably can, they try and consult with me on it, the, the, uh, the coaches there. But we've got Simon, Simon Island, who's head of coaching, who he works with, with the first team and he works with the rest of the academy in order to bridge that gap between the academy and the, uh, and the first team. Hence the reason why tomorrow you'll probably see three or four academy players involved in the in the squad tomorrow, um, and then obviously we've got Perry Suckling who's come in as the academy manager, who who's also an excellent coach and an, uh, an excellent developer of players. So basically, it's so, got, so I'm going to say so it's down to Perry to find the next um, Clive Allen, Kevin Gallen, um, Alan McDonald, Steve Wicks. There's no pressure on the lad at all, is there? Who's that? On, uh, on Perry Suckling. <laughs> well, not really, because no no disrespect to QPR, we haven't really produced a consistent first team player since Richard Langley, so uh, we got we have got a bit to do. It would be nice to sort that out. It would be really nice to sort that out, because I think fans need that as well. They need to see a kid. We love a, uh, players coming through the youth set up, but you know, we've, we've done our, our wheeling dealing and um, get the big names, Chris, and I don't think it really suited QPR, so it would be nice to go back to basics a wee bit, like, you know. Well, the thing is, what we would want to do, we got, we want to we want to get a balance between the two, because I think you you obviously got to spend money to make yourself competitive, but I think it's it's also important to make sure that your youth system does have a light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, you know whenever we get an opportunity to pl- to put a, a youngster on without actually threatening him and putting him in a position where he could uh, he could fail, we we try and do it. For instance, we put uh, Carl Capico on the pitch. On the, on the weekend because we thought at that stage um, we probably had the points in the bag and it would be an opportunity for him to play at home in front of a crowd uh, just to break the ice on his emotions and, his, and, 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 and heighten his confidence for, for when he does get his opportunity. Chris, the, uh, the Wolves game last week was one of the best comebacks we've seen at QPR over the last few years. Um, we didn't start the game very well. What did you say to the players at half-time to get them performing so well in the second half? Uh, to be honest with you, I, you know, we, there was only, uh, uh, there's only a couple of things that, that I had to say because the goals we gave away were soft and they were against the game plan of how of how we we plan to defend and it sort of reiterated what what uh, me Simon and Steve had told them about about certain things that that, that had to be done and uh, you know after the first two goals they started 
they started doing it. But, you know, by that time, you're 2-0 down. Um, so, we basically said to them, look, you know, great that we scored the goal uh, just before half-time, which helped us. Uh, great that they managed the game at that stage to only stay 2-1 down by half-time because, you know, you can get it, you can get excited and try and score another goal. Then all of a sudden, it's back to 3-1, to, to two-goal deficit. So, uh, as long as we'd kept that down to 2-1, I thought... If we kept playing our football, we, we would we would uh, we'd always have a chance of, uh, of, of scoring. And plus, uh, with Matt, Matt tends to really wallop the ball, and, and sometimes it's a little bit uncontrolled. So we, you know, we advised him about taking a little bit off, so he hits the target, you know, on a wet night. And uh, fortunately, he hit the target a couple of times. Are you are you surprised he wasn't included in the uh, Scotland squad today? Matty Phillips. Are you surprised Matty Phillips hasn't been included in the latest Scotland squad that came out today? Matt Phillips not included in what? In the Scotland squad. The Scotland squad. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, yeah, very surprised. Very surprised. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. Uh, I mean, obviously, Gordon uh, uh, Gordon Strachan is a very experienced manager, so I wouldn't call into question yeah. his selection. Um, but. But I, I, I can say that I'd be I'd be surprised that he hasn't been picked because I think he's on form and um, I think um, he could he could help any squad. Hi, right, Chris. It's the the other Chris uh, here again. Now, Hi, Chris. If, you, <laughs> if you're keeping up with this. Um, I was just going to say, uh, um, on Saturday, obviously, it was quite a special day uh, with, the, with the, all the Stan Bowl stuff going on. Um, how, how was it catching up with Stan again? Well, Stan, no, fantastic. I mean, I know he's, I know he's ill, very ill, but uh, he looked great. Um, and it's always sad to see anybody get, um, you know, an ailment like that. Um, but uh, I was really pleased that we were at, we, 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 we held on to the result um, just to make a tribute to him, really. Yeah, it was a, it was a fitting game for him. I, I I think someone I think it was actually to give him credit it was it was Clive on the Loffer mes, Words message board said it was typical QPR. We beat them and then we beat them again, which is just like what Stan Bowles used to do. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he would have loved that uh, an entertaining game like that. He would have loved it, wouldn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And and I I, I read somewhere that you um, you and him had a little night out a few years ago. Yeah, when I was I was a young lad uh, in the olden days. Uh, I, I was on loan at Brentford. I went there for for uh, for a month, um, and it was funny enough because Don Shanks had come to Brighton then. Oh. Uh, uh, Don's my good mate, really good mate. Um, and Don and, and Stan are great mates, aren't they? So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Don Don had got there, and he he was in the team at the, at the time, and I went on loan to to Brentford just to have a month there and seeing a different a different club, you know. And uh, Stan came there. Uh, from Notts Forest and you know he was always the king of the castle wherever he went <laughs> but uh, he, he, he took me under his wing for a night and uh, I, I think I'll, I'll close I'll, I'll close the story there <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably will listen mate before I go I mean, Paul's going to ask you one more question my my little girl who's, uh, who's 10 wanted to uh, uh, ask daddy to get you to ask you one question and that is how did you first get into football into liking football how did I burst into football hmm yeah. No, I, I played. I just played when I was five, all the way through. You know, like you're, when you're when you're young. Yeah. And uh, I was fortunate to to uh, you know play for a Islington district, and I got spotted. I went to Arsenal, got released from Arsenal. Went to Charlton, got released from Charlton, and then I went to Bristol City as an apprentice. And uh, back in the day, with. Uh, you know, Norman Hunters and Joe Royals and people like that. I used to clean their boots. Um, and then I got released again. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and then I went to uh, Brighton and became a first-team player. And good. then from then on, I, I was a first-team player. So you'll get a good, you'll get a good reception uh, when we go down to the Amex then? I, I hope so. I really, I really hope so. I hope, we're, you know, we're, I hope we're in a very competitive position and uh, we've got a settled squad and hopefully... Uh, you know, we'll go there and score some goals like we have done this week. Scoring nine in a week has been really good for us, you know? Nice one, mate. Hi, Chris. It's mine again. Um, very quickly, how frustrated were you, as uh, from a head coach point of view, in the kind of stuttering pre-season, like, for, for whatever reason, the game's being cancelled? And, and do you think that they 
them games being cancelled maybe played a part in the opening two results? Um, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. Very frustrated that that that, that those games were cancelled. Um, I I did feel I did feel by the time we had got to the Atalanta game, we were probably a game or two behind our our, uh, our preparation. Um, you know, getting getting to find out exactly where people needed needed to be. Um, I think any time you have a stutter in pre-season, it does affect you a little bit. But to be honest with you, we have got some good professionals in in in, in the camp and some good lads. They haven't really complained about it very much. So I'm very pleased with the way that they've responded. Um, I, I, I couldn't say 100% that 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 has affected us, but. I would say that we would hope that that wouldn't happen again next season. Okay. Right, Chris, uh, I'm, I'm not going to keep you for much longer because I'm, I'm sure you're very busy trying to say Messi and Ronaldo and um, a, few, <laughs> a few people like that there. Um, I, t- I tell you what, eh? <laughs> that, that, that would make the, the championship suddenly leave Channel 5 rapidly, I can tell you. Um, a serious question for me, which isn't normally what I do, but um, how hard is it for, for for British managers these days with the way that the, the Premiership is and, and, and even the Championship? With so, do, do they do? Are we giving young managers and pl- promoting rightly and giving them enough chances to actually make it in the game? Because there's a hell of a lot of them aren't uh, players are just leaving the game rapidly and, and maybe not get the chance in coaching they deserve. Well, young man, English managers. Well, yeah, yeah. Br- Br- British managers, English managers, whatever. But just does... yeah, British managers. I, I think get a raw deal. I think that we are. Uh, what I would say, I think we're we're quite uh, prejudiced against our own in this in this country. I think that anything we've we've, we've sounding mildly exotic uh, tends to get a job or tends to get more time. You know. If you put a young British player in a team and he doesn't do very well, people tend to criticise him very harshly. Mm. You, you, if you bring someone from abroad the same age, they give him the excuse of, uh, you know, he needs to settle down and, and, you know, he needs to get used to it. Uh, and we never afford that to our, to our own, our own uh, uh, managers or coaches or players, or players in that fact. Um, we had it at, um, in my old club, you know, where, uh, you know, we would get stick for playing Harry Kane, but, you know, you had Soldado, who cost 26 million, you know, mm. having a really bad time. And they would, people start, every time Harry Kane had a bad game, they would start singing Soldado's name. Wow. You know, despite, despite the fact that he cost 26 million pounds and Harry Kane cost nothing. And despite mm. the fact he was probably on the premiership average of, I don't know, in excess of. 50s or 40s, wherever they're on, and uh, Harry Kane would have been on, you know, peanuts. You know, he would have been on a, on a young professional, you, you know, weight. So um, we don't tend to give out our, our own that much time. It's quite sad, though, isn't it, in some respects? But Chris, before I'm going to let you go, I promise. But I'm just so pleased you came on the show. Absolutely delighted, and thank no you so much for doing that. But one thing before you leave is, can you give the QPR fans a wee message and just of of what our role is this season? I think you've played your role. You play in it all the time. I don't think you have to do any more than you're doing. When I look look at uh, Charlton at 3,200 on the first day of the season, when I look at uh, I look at Yeovil, I look at even when we were in Italy, people coming over to watch games against the waiters. You know, when I look at uh, <laughs> Wolves last week, you know, I, 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 you've played your part. You don't have to. You, you, you've over, you've over, overdone your, what you need to do. And uh, we're just really, really pleased that the fans are continually to support, supporting us, even when, when we're not doing well. Um, and I, and I, I think that the, the players can't feel that they haven't been well supported by the fans. And uh, we're, we're just hoping that we can give you a season to cheer for and, and just keep, keep um, scoring goals, but keeping them out. Do you know what? That's a brilliant message. Chris Ramsey, absolutely delighted to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And I'll be at Huddersfield on Saturday, uh, along with many others, and we'll hopefully keep that run going and we'll, we'll keep cheering. I'm the one that looks like Martin O'Neill in the away end, by the way, just, just in case you're wondering who I am. <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah, big thanks, fella. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks a million. Thank Cheers. Take care, mate. Bye.
Did I, I often thought that, you know, when I, when I was playing football, if I had changed my name to Findinio, yeah, it could have worked. Well, I think Chris Mendes would be fine, mate. I mean, he sounds quite exotic. <laughs> yeah, well, give him a job. Got, yeah, that's a great my, my uncle Pedro wasn't bad, was he? Then <laughs> <laughs> so he got elbowed by Ben Thatcher. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll teach you to mess with cider. Um, right, that was quite oh, good. That interview. was terrible, Paul. <laughs> I just. What the interview of my joke? Your joke. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. no, the interview okay. was great. Yeah. It was, was it good? It was yeah, really yeah, good. It was, great, yeah. it, it was a lot more open than I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be very candid, and he's. He was I think. He, I think he's been reasonably open from the start. To be fair, I don't. It, I, 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 I don't but it is a shame that we need that money that from the Austin deal if he goes to buy another player because that means we won't get one. And he is right about the. But I think we knew that really, didn't we? Yeah, but <laughs> you'd think they maybe get off, get get someone lined up, you know, in a, on a loan or something like that. You know, they probably well, maybe have they alone. have. I mean, the fact he, he he said at the top of the interview that he, he's he's been looking at players and okay, he didn't. But he, he did say we, he did say we need someone up front. He did say that, yeah. and, and and I think you know from early show, and we haven't seen um, much of what's his face from behind. Polter. Yeah, so, no, not, oh. no, we've seen we've seen a bit of him. <laughs> Jet. Uh, yeah, Jet. That's his. That, that's um, him. I think he's um, gonna be a character. I'm sure. Lad. I'm sure he's keeping his cards. Close to his chest, though. He's the thing is, I mean, I know there's, you know, jet, the sort of. I mean, again, you know, look, maybe looked a bit but in the China shop in one of the games. But <laughs> I think he, he had a great city season for Bristol City last year, and I think you know maybe he needs a bit of a run. And I'm sure against Carlisle, we will get some of these guys out. And because the, the fact of the matter is, if you've got Austin there, you're going to play him, aren't you? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, you know? of course. If and it must be a little bit difficult for the, for players like Poulter. Um, with Charlie Austin there, in some respects, it must be difficult because mm. they don't know they're not the main man. And if he does go, it could kind of like give him a new lease of life. Mm. You don't know. That. You mentioned but, sorry, uh, sorry. You mentioned Pulis in that interview there, yeah. and it would have been. Int- I would never have asked him. Would never put him in that position. But it'd be interesting to know his take because Pulis was bleating yesterday about Berahino's head being turned, but yet he's doing exactly the same thing to Matty Phillips. And um, yeah. it'd be interesting to know Chris Ramsey's thought on that. I mean, I would never put him in that position because wow. he'd, he'd probably bat it away. But and yeah. you work for ATV Sport. <laughs> well, no, but what he, what he did, what, he, what we answered, Dear him, God. what he answered about the deadline day is true, though. He's obviously yeah. wants it, doesn't want it to be on at the moment. And I don't every, think any manager does. Anyone no. does no. Mourinho's come out. They've, they've all they've all they've all come out and said that you know. And then Mourinho goes and buys until he Pedro. works in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, I, th- I think I can see the point. It's like um, I don't know anything about any other sport because I'm ignorant. But I think in, a, in, in American football. You you, you start the season with your players and you finish with the same sort of players and coach and everything else so well there's America, a lot of the American sports I said, imagine the, having Paul Hart for a season Jesus sorry go on I yeah. just, okay well I was just going to say very quickly in American sport you have this system whereby um, the worst club in the league either the club that finished bottom yeah. gets the choice of the best mm. young player available oh, okay mm-hmm. so uh, for, for instance like last season we could have this season bought Gareth Bale for instance you know uh, when he was 18 or, you, you know that sort yeah, of thing kind of auctioned off and then Man United end up with um, uh, Rashid Al you know <laughs> oh stop trying to be clever <laughs> what's the, the issue I just, oh. well you mentioned Paul Hart it wouldn't actually be a problem if he was our manager because getting rid of Austin we just play four six zero again if you might, yes. <laughs> do you know? Yeah. Okay, let's not go back to their no, memories, please. right? We're going to do the R's in this show because Gabriel and his little vest are doing windmill sounds up. <laughs> um, he's got his little vest and he's got a little. Uh, he's got a little. Uh, what's it say on there? Your wristband, artist. It runs deep. He's been. He's been somewhere. He's been playing. DJ in somewhere. He's an artist, all right. Yeah. No, and it's, it's best that way. Um, Chris. Well, I've got quite a long R's end. No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They won't um, go to the pub. <laughs> okay. No. No. Two things. Um, first of all, I'd like to pay tribute to Ted Sumner, um, who's a lifelong QPR fan who sadly died towards the end of last season um, I haven't had the chance to mention this till now um, basically just because one thing or another I haven't been on the podcast but he's the father of Wayne also known as Ted who some of you know as Bex Hoops on Twitter um, and Ted Senior took Ted Junior along to his first QPR game and they sat together for 30 years and I don't know, he's, 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 he's a decent bloke and he deserves a shout out. Um, Definitely. And secondly, me and my little girl, and I was gutted that I couldn't make it on Saturday of all days, but anyway, we couldn't make the game on Saturday and I asked the club if they could make use of the tickets and they gave them to a lady and her six-year-old son who's on the autism spectrum. Uh, it was his first ever football match and apparently he absolutely loved it, uh, which made me feel a whole lot better for missing the game. So thank you to Connor at the club for sorting that out. That was a really, Hi, nice, that was a really, yeah, was a really nice thing to do. And the last thing was so it was it was the, 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 the Tiger Cubs walk 
to the annual walk to raise money for the kids with Down syndrome is taking place on the 3rd of October and it's from it's a bit different this year it's from QPR's training ground to Loftus Road and the reason for that is is because they wanted it to coincide with the Tiger Club's 7th birthday so for the game against Bolton that's when it's taking place and I'm sure me and you will be there and anyone else we can rope in there's no way I'm passing the current scepter without popping in yeah absolutely yeah yeah. Martin Uh, yeah a couple of positives really Uh, been quite rare recently in the last couple of years for our club to get positives about it but especially off the field and I think Saturday with the Stan Bowles team Mm. I mean it was it's been few and far between that you kind of feel very very proud to be a Rangers fan Mm. you know off the field I mean there's been a few on the field a few off I mean a few bad moments as well but you know there was a great atmosphere Saturday and it was and it was and it was um, put you know it was brought on by the Stan Bowles thing and the Alzheimer's thing in general and I think that was a very um, good thing very good thing and it was a good atmosphere and it it brought people together I think there was a bit more there was less kind of Nast- not nastiness that's not ever not, you know but uh, you're actually right actually I never thought of that but you're actually there wasn't much on. of it Saturday it was quite it was, there was a lot I noticed a lot more kids there Saturday than before like especially in the, in the obviously in the lower loft the, it was a really family atmosphere rather than you know you old, old, men, old men like me moaning but uh, you don't moan <laughs> do you think that's thing? that's maybe you know like that, I mean, because that's, that's why I'd have loved to have been there on Saturday, but circumstances dictate that I couldn't be. But people taking their kids along and saying, now, now, you know, whatever you hear about all these legends, this term bandied about now again, that man there on the pitch yeah. is a legend. I, mean, I took my son there, who's 16, and, and he, I, he'd, he'd never seen Stan until I showed him footage recently on YouTube and stuff. And so it was nice for him to kind of see the man in person, you know, and it was good. And quickly, very quickly, talking to my son, it's kind of, kind of got under the radar recently. Um, over the summer but they actually QPR lifted their ages of a, a concession a youth concession ticket season ticket from 16 to 18 oh, in the summer excellent. so so it kind of went kind of unnoticed but so my son who's 17 in November has got two more years at 89 pound a season ticket which is brilliant really and it's uh, you know so he's going to be 18 next season and it's still only 89 quid for a whole season you, you, you could get one of them as well Martin you'd pass <laughs> that's, yeah, really? that's any, any chance <laughs> they can lift it to 20 before my before my <laughs> it'd be the oldest look imagine some people around you had they would have said <laughs> so, Chris, are before you... My, I was saying, before my... Sorry, I'm, I'm, I really, don't, I really be... don't like the sound of my own voice, honestly. I just thought, before my guys, we haven't really talked, but he plays the band Orange Goblin, who are quite a big heavy metal band. They were debated the number one heavy metal band by some magazine a couple of years back, and they've supported, well, Black Sabbath, one of the... Mm. I mean, I mean, people all... And, uh, but can, any, any gigs you've got coming up that you want to quickly mention? Uh, we, we're on tour in December throughout the UK so I know December the 17th you're at um, Electric Ballroom yeah. the Electric Ballroom yeah. so me and Finney are going to get down Definitely. there head banging can, we, can, we, can we get the passes to get you to the bar afterwards I've never been to a bar at a gig ever in my life <laughs> afterwards no pressure what the after show but you'll yeah. never get in the podcast again <laughs> um, <laughs> do you stick that one over Martin just, yeah, just yeah. let that one pass Chris I'll see you in the bar <laughs> right uh, my eyes end is that my, my little nephew uh, was at his first QPR game with his my, my brother his dad on Saturday um, and he he's only just turned two so I think he might be a bit too young <laughs> because about half, by, by, uh, by half time is that he was uh, telling telling his dad that he wanted to go home because he wasn't allowed to go and play on the pitch during the game <laughs> during so, the yeah, game yeah yeah so uh, he wanted to go and get involved he's like daddy daddy I want to go and play on that big park um, so if you've got any advice on how to get a kid that young um, um, just kind of like sat down and watching QPR then, then feel free to get in touch oh, okay well my, my hours end the show is quite simply straightforward our fans are brilliant. Stan Bowles, lump in my throat, I tell you. It was tear-jerking. It was amazing. It, it's, it's so good to do these things. Stan's still with us. He hasn't gone away anywhere. He's just a little bit ill. And then people have got to remember that. And some people were talking about him in, in you know, context of like, you know, he was, no, he is, he is yeah, our yeah. greatest ever player. And, he, and that's never going to be taken away from him. And I tell you what, you guys on Saturday... You made people cry. There was um, Paul Hull told me he was at the box office. People came down from Sheffield just to see Stan, you know, for the whole Stan Bowles thing. And it just, it's amazing. I mean, them sort of things realise. People talk about where we spent money in the Premier League and everything. They laugh at us. I tell you what, that was a true QPR on Saturday. But my last hours end of the show is there was a bit of a thing yesterday where um, my niece has got a boyfriend who's a QPR fan, and um, 
that's quite bizarre. Because I'm going to keep you off family. Yeah. family. You know, it's like it's like what well, you're getting a bit. You're not uh, quite you know, sure what to do. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of yeah. like and, he, and he, his, his dad's a mad fan. They go to games, everything Ooh, else, and, and threatened. And now half the family want to come to QPR. It's like no, you're not. This is, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. stay away. You know, this is my bit. No, it's, it's good. And um, yeah, nice to meet you, Dan. If you listen to the podcast, you're a lovely fella from um, Listen Grove. There you go. Christ, I hope his name was Dan. Anyway, listen. Thanks for what you did Saturday, guys. Um, <laughs> Fans, brilliant. Everything. The season's going to be looking a wee bit better. Martin, thank you so much. Thank you. You're w- welcome anytime, I tell you. You're, you're, you're a good guest. Charlie Austin, if you're listening, then stay. <laughs> yeah, you must stay. Chris, as always, I've missed It's been too long. Don't leave it this long again. Don't leave me this way. <laughs> Jesus wept. Right, Mendez, save the show for God's sake. Say something interesting. Yours. That's it. Good night. QPR. QPR. This podcast is a West 12 Media and Burble Media production.